Richard Gonsmart is a fourth generation Tampa individual, and he, coming from Ybor City, which was at one time the heart of Tampa, and coming from the restaurant business where his family has had an institution here, I believe it's the oldest restaurant in Tampa, he represents the business side, a capitalist who has employed hundreds of individuals over the years of the restaurant, possibly even thousands of individuals, um, has been an institution that helps to capture the, the flavors and smells and sounds of what made Ybor City, Ybor City. You know, often I think my life is a dream that it's not possible to have been blessed, to have been born to such a wonderful, caring family that my great-grandfather left his native country of Cuba with four young sons and not much of an education or money, but a dream and an opportunity that was possible in Ybor City, where he worked hard until he became the general manager of the Florida Brewery that opened the Columbia Saloon in 1903 on December 17th. And I was blessed also to have known both of my grandparents, Casimiro and Carmen Hernandez. And my earliest memory were, was when I was three and a half years old. And I walked into the refrigerator, the walk-in cooler in the kitchen, I saw these big fish, red snapper, pompano, trout, and a group were looking at me. And I ran up the door and, and I started screaming and the chef, Sarapico, starts laughing at me and my grandfather says, ¿Qué te pasa, muchacho? What's wrong with you, kid? And I told him the fish were gonna bite me. This is where my education began and he took me in the cooler. He told, it was, told me it was my job on Fridays when I would come with my mom for dinner to go check the fish and report back for the fresh by looking in the eyes for the clarity. And the gills should be bright red. And the flesh, I had me touch it with my finger that it should be firm. And every Friday I would go in to check and report back. I thought it was really my job. We lived on Davis Island and, and uh, we had a utopian childhood. You couldn't have asked for a, a better one. I'd often accompany Richard's parents on Saturday we would hang out with them and go to, to the Columbia and Ybor City and we would find back rooms and would discover stuff and, and, and uh, we would have a ball. Well, Richard was always a very special character. He uh, had a high energy level and he was always um, looking at different projects to pursue even as a young boy. You could almost say it was love at first sight. I saw him and um, was immediately attracted to him. We were both very young. I was 14 and I had tried out to be a cheerleader at Jesuit High School, the school that he was attending. We met on the, the curb there at Jesuit and he was of course very well known. He was a, a football star. As a student, Richard will be quick to tell you that uh, he, he was likely to have graduated last in his class. Um, that's not necessarily true. But he's also quick to share with others uh, that he suffers from a mild case of dyslexia that essentially went undiagnosed until well into his adult world. Um, that being said, it's important to recognize that you know, Richard's the type of person who doesn't see any obstacles. He only sees opportunity. What I do is not work. Uh, my first class ever at the University of Denver had, um, that was uh, taught by the head of the school, Dr. Douglas Keister, first thing he said the first day was, never stop to think about how many hours a week you work. If you do, you're not happy. So I have no idea because I don't think I work one hour. Um, I enjoy what I do, I'm having fun. Well, I mean, just as he's passionate about a 1905 salad, um, he's equally passionate about the causes that he's involved in. Uh, some things, for example, prostate cancer efforts are things that uh, he's been, he's had to deal with. When I found out my father had cancer, I knew if anyone could beat cancer, I knew it would be him. He knew he was going to go in there and he was going to get it taken care of and he was going to be that spokesperson that he was praying to God for because he could then say it firsthand, I've done this, I've survived it, help me find a cure so other people can survive as well. And if that doesn't make a girl proud, I don't know what else would. I think my father has set a wonderful example to our community in the ways he has given back. He has been involved in so many various organizations that touch so many different facets of our community. He has touched lives in ways that he doesn't even know. And he does it because he's generous, but he does it because um, he's a caring human being. And he knows that he has an opportunity because of what his family has given to him and what he and Casey have built. Uh, they have an opportunity to be generous and to be supportive of others in this community. Richard is just filled with so much passion. And he's always you know, signing off on his emails, here's to life. 
and it's really it's really refreshing to see somebody who loves life so much and who's filled with so much passion because that's infectious. It's about making a difference and um, it's not what you do now, it's what you're doing for the future and that's what my, my plan is so that uh, my efforts will continue with those that we've helped. Just like this morning I was mentoring a uh, young man from the University of Tampa even though we, we were taping and uh, I know I have another meeting after this and somebody says you don't have the time. I said well if I can't help make the time to help others then I'm just too darn busy. To be given this award by the Junior League which is an organization that uh, gives back every day. Um, I mean that's a group of women if you want something done you give it to the Junior League and they will flat get it done. And Richard's the same way and so for the Junior League to be honoring Richard Gonsmart for his contributions to the greater good is the perfect marriage. And Richard couldn't be a more worthy honoree. Uh, and the Junior League is, is probably one of the best groups to be giving this award to him.